Hello YouTube, James Green, Short Series Shenanigans. Part number three, we're making the uh, plates, fixture plates. So off camera, we went ahead and finished squaring everything up. Uh, the edges, edge milling everything, so everything is square for what we need. Um, fits in the vise, great. Um, what we did, we're using the fly cutter that you guys saw me do, uh, <coughs> use one of the bits. And it's got a little bit of a scallop and I'll, I'll pan in on it here in a little bit. But what I did is figuring out uh, the what feed rate works well on, <laughs> on this. Um, it's two and a half, which is kind of odd because that, that is what worked great for <clears throat> when we were feeding the three quarter end mill doing the tops of these, trimming everything down. So... Um, what I did was I started off a little slower than that and you can see here and it's kind of hard to show up on camera but I'll try to get it to where you guys you can see right here okay it was fuzzy and it's a little rough again not a showstopper this will be the bottom of the plate I was going too slow this side here you can see considerably better and really that's that that is nothing that's just shadow right there you guys can see that because I fed one way and one way back the other way and that was where the it crossed in the middle that little area but that's just shadow I mean I can feel it it might be a tenth but for what we're doing here it's fine so same thing kept that tuned it up just a little bit more and that's the second side and you can see we fed that way and then this way and when we were actually it was this and then this and that created that was the overlap and you can barely feel, I can feel it with my fingers a little bit I can put it on and measure it but it's for what we're doing it's negligible um, I will throw down and uh, this will actually end up being the bottom where this kind of felt weird I'll just, you know, that'll end up being the bottom, but this will be the top of the fixture plate, and uh, I will lay down. I've got my granite lapping plate that's just for lapping, okay? I'll put a piece of, uh, of uh, paper down with WD-40, and I'll just, will try to get that little bit out, just because, you know, it to kind of deburr it, because you can feel a little bit of I guess if you want to call it raised little burrs and of course we still have to go and deburr all the edges and I, I'll use my Noga burr for that so same thing on the other one I did two of them tuned in the rate and uh, dialed it in and it just come out beautiful I mean that's you know it's like a mirror and same thing again barely you can feel that little transition point and uh, same thing here on this one. This one's even better. This is the one I just got through doing and really got the feed rate dialed in um, to where it was just smooth. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and show you what we got. You can see some of the chips we're creating. They are actually the small little, and they're real small, little short curly, whoop, curly cues. You'll see them. There's a bunch of them laying over here. I'll go ahead and zoom in on the bit so you guys can see or the tool what we have here and I know the camera's probably washing that out but I'm gonna point that right there and zoom in so you guys can see the profile okay let me get the camera okay trying to do this real slow okay <clears throat> I found if you put your hand there it helps the camera focus you can see the little bit whoop trying to get it to where you guys, uh, trying to get where you guys can see this okay you can see the little bit of the scallop that I was talking about that's in here and it's rounded okay because we're actually cutting from here up okay I don't know if the camera is able to pick it up or if you but there you'd be able to see the scallop a little bit okay get where my hand and you can see this is actually dished on this side right here okay and then if you can see the relief on the back we'll go ahead and uh, zoom out just a hair and you can see how it's relieved on the back now it's hard to show you underneath the bottom but it's relief cut all the way around so and yes it's spinning backwards 
it's spinning left hand, which is fine. That's just how the tool is shaped. Because you can run this mill left or right hand. <clears throat> I'll leave you guys right there. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and grab another plate and slap it in here. Again, what we're doing here, we're going to be making four of these. And we're going to come up and, because this is just a mill finish. <clears throat> come in here, set them in. And they've been locking up really, really, really nice. Um, haven't had any rock issues. Even before I tighten it down, I always make sure that it, you know, there's no, there's no movement. It's locking up really nice. Give it a good. <clears throat> and now what I like to do, because I was, you know, we were cutting a while ago, so we know we have to come, come up a little bit. Let's come over and see. Actually, I'm going to move this, drop the knee down a little bit, and we'll come in with the knee and set everything. All right, might be a little loud, watch the ears. taking a 5,000th step to cut. WD-40. It likes a relatively aggressive feed rate. We're doing about 5 to 7,000 depth to cut. On that first pass, on the first one, I was taking about 15, and that was that was a bit much. So we backed it off, and we did the other side. Really, you don't need that much because it's not warped that bad. But you do want everything to have an equal surface. And you want to get rid of that mill finish. curious we are running 1115 rpm and you can tell there's like I said there's just that little bit of a transition there and uh, it's creating a really nice little short curly Q chip is what it's creating I don't know if the camera will pick up on that but real nice little short you know 
So good results so far. You know, you just had to play with it a little bit, figure out what will what looks good, what when it cuts good. And I've had people ask about my mill, and they're like, "Hey, you know that's pretty noisy." I'm like, "Yeah." <clears throat> Before I go to the summer bash, I'm actually going to take the head off this thing, take it apart, and I know I've probably got some bearings that need to be replaced up here. Um, and so, as far as I know, they're original from, this machine was built in 1967, so I've never had it apart, but I am presuming that everything in there is probably original, so it will definitely get rebuilt <clears throat> as far as that's concerned. Now, we're just going to, because we're the same depth, we'll come over here and double check and make sure, but we will probably dial in 5 thou. We'll just check it here, we'll slide over. Uh, make sure we're not, you know, because again, this is a mill finish. It's not flat, and that's why we're doing all this. See? Even though we had our, we shouldn't have had to, we should have actually, in theory, had to bring the table up a little bit. But that's the difference that shows you that even though it's flat, it's not flat. We're making it flat now. I didn't change the height on anything. I'm like, well, let's just feed it in and see. And it started cutting, so. catch your thumbnail on that on that from the other one now there is a couple spots there where chips rubbed you know but that's what the uh, that's what the uh, deburring when I go to put it on the sandpaper to get rid of and you can't see it from the camera but I can show you where chips do get stuck in it and I'll try to hold it where the camera won't wash it out but you can see let me see if I can get the camera to show correctly here all right if I can point them out I'm trying to find it there's one you can see right there see that little if I hold it like that you might be able to see it but you can see these little kind of rough areas right here 
trying not to wash out the camera but there's a few spots you can kind of see there where I've rubbed my fingers over them where chips have gotten in and rubbed back in and that's fine that's not a showstopper that's <clears throat> that's called that's, this is what I get the cheap Ingenum packages at Harbor Freight this is what I used it for of the 10 by 12 or whatever it is black oxide it's really really cheap stuff it comes apart really easy which is fine it's not a showstopper um, because aluminum gums up sandpaper so what I do to get rid of those little burrs and stuff like that um, what I found works well for me on this is uh, using my I have a granite lapping plate and I've showed it before in older videos and I'll pull it out and I'll show you guys I'll, I'll actually set it up here on uh, <clears throat> on the mill and just because it's you know a nice level splat flat <laughs> splat that too a good area right here and a good camera view good lighting and I'll show you and it requires WD-40 my favorite aluminum lube um, and I'll just show you how I go about because aluminum will gum up sandpaper and there's no for what we're doing we're just trying to get those little pieces that kind of create a little raised ridge and we're just trying to get those off there because you don't want to use something you want to make sure it's relatively flat and pull those off so I'll show you how to how I deburr um, as far as the flat stuff now on the corners love 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 my Noga burr matter of fact sitting here behind me on the table with the uh, power draw bar that I wound up with um, I've got to build and install that and from what I've been told this is Chicago pneumatic um, air wrench the CP 720 this is and it's Kurt manufacturing from what I told this is supposed to be the cat's meow when it comes to uh, power draw bars so we build and install that. We've got bolt gun parts here. We need to move over out of the way. So I've had people ask about this deburring set before and this is the platinum set and I love it. I'm a real big fan of it. Let's get the One thing you can do, you can use this for sheet aluminum as well. Get it right on the corners and you can pull. That one I'd have to adjust it. No, let's try a different one. That one's not cutting the way I want it to cut. I will, however, get one of these here. I like this because you can change out the tips in it. Let's grab one of these tips here. Hit interchange. Here we go. All right. Just kind of show you guys what we got going on. Got our Noger tool. Let me adjust this up shorter because you can adjust the length that it sticks out. What I generally do is I go around one way on everything because everyone has their own method of the madness. there and there we go because it has a little bit of a bounce now what you can do what I found out what works to get that little area at the beginning where you started you can't actually come back the other way and what I'll do is I'll put it like sometimes in the the bench vise or the mill vise but you can still come up here and get that little bit of a spot 
started. Same thing here. Comes from years and years and years of whittling. You know, pays off if you don't know what whittling is for the individuals that are not familiar with. Because depending on where you're at in the world, <clears throat> for those of you here in the United States, you know, or that are familiar with woodworking, you know what I'm talking about. You get your first pocket knife. I think I got my first one at age like eight or nine. Anyway, so small pocket knife. You get the lecture from the old man, and the reason. And some people are what do you call your dad, the old man, the hey kid old man so him and I use that as a term of endearment we always have a you know I've, I've even had believe it or not I've had hate mail about how dare you disrespect your father by calling him old man now that's something my dad and I have have done way back but anyway um, but uh, first got my first knife he's like hey kid let me show you here's the proper way to whittle and you know with thumb and everything and I remember that for using that pocket knife working on making something and he showed me well let's you know let's first start off and he showed me the basics you know and I remember that day that that pot matter of fact I've got that pocket knife put up um, <laughs> I woke up the next morning because I had spent all day and you know always if, if you're gonna cut toward you or not toward you but you always made sure you did like a shortcut you never did like this in case you slipped but or if you had to do a long cut, you cut away. But when you were doing shortcuts towards you, with obviously you have to be careful with this too. But when you did shortcuts toward you, you tried to go away. But using that hand like that, man, I woke up the next morning and I had <laughs> my hand was like this, and I was like, oh, he's like, what's the matter? Your hand sore? Because I think I, I don't know. I must have carved a hundred tree branches up that day working on stuff and learning how to sharpen the knife and everything and of course yeah there were a few I remember slipped a few times and went and real because it was sharp case case knife case brand and it, there was slices in my thumb a few of them <laughs> there were that's when I learned about using duct tape <laughs> so what I started doing so I wouldn't slice my fingers and this was way back before they had cut gloves and all that that you have nowadays so what I started doing when I was when I was going to do any of that is what I would do first off I would put duct tape on that thumb especially when I was doing uh, real precise cuts because you can get the leverage you know pulling and pushing and uh, he saw that and he's like well I see you figured out how to keep from cutting your thumb and yeah and uh, so I made sure that you know it's just you learn you, you learn and so it's all part of I just kind of think about that every time I go to deburr a piece of metal is getting my first pocket knife and doing the the whittling trick and you know like you guys saw me redo that one where it kind of went did it did it and it you didn't have just the right angle so you go back again to get it and uh, we'll go back and you know we'll deburr the corners and stuff like that I'll actually fire up uh, the belt sander that I've got back here the shop actually it's on the floor the bandsaw is hooked up right now but uh, and we'll do that so yeah really really beautiful finish uh, I have learned on this particular scoop style it likes a relatively aggressive feed rate and like I said down here on this it read two and a half so whatever that amounts to you guys were able to see how quick it moved going too slow created the chatter and the messy look like I showed you on the first piece of metal um, didn't want to go too deep I did that on the first go around I think I was like 15 thousandths and that was off and I was going too deep and too slow so we made another pass and I'm like okay well that's good because we're just out we're not after super nice pretty look because we were going to call that the bottom and I'm just going to lap it off anyway and I'll actually mark bottom and so when we drill and tap we'll do everything from the top and of course you know we're going to counter sink and chamfer and and so two of these we're going to actually do and I haven't sat down and went through my vast assortment of fasteners yet um two of these we're going to do a small size and the other so I don't know if I'm going to do some that are like quarter inch or some that are like 10 size screw pitch or maybe even do some or one that's 3 8 so I'm going to go through all my fasteners I've got a bunch and so it's a chance to use them all up so there we go hope you guys have learned something 
So I did learn, and I guess if you guys want to try it on your mill, get out there, get your high speed bit, uh, create your own fly cutter, if you will. Um, and just as long as you've got a relief angle, um, because on aluminum, it likes to have a positive rake. And the reason I went ahead and used this that I did on the wood is because it had that little bit of a pot, that scoop, and I've showed you guys the little, almost like looks like some stuff that would come off a lathe. You can see the little curly cues, okay? That's why I chose to use this one because it already had that positive rake to it. And so you, however you go about getting that in there, whether you use your grinder or you create it with a Dremel, um, it's the same thing as creating a chip breaker for doing like brass or aluminum now if I was doing brass or copper because this already has a positive it's got a positive rake to it this would definitely work well on it so there you go take that knowledge use it you guys play around with your mill and just you know again part three here of building the uh, fixture plates I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones off camera and then the next video after this I'm gonna go ahead and do the layout and pick up decide according to the fasteners how far I think what I'm gonna go with is a half inch spacing on the holes maybe I don't know it depends on I've just got a what screw size I'm gonna use as to what I think will work well right now half inch disbursement of the holes equally I think will look not only look well but pretty much serve an overall purpose don't want them too close together don't want them too far apart I think half inch will work well might be overkill we might go three quarters don't know we'll just you know we'll play with it and see and figure out okay what's going to be too close together what's going to be too far apart so we're going to lay one out I'll actually do a layout of when I figure one out I'll do a layout and show you how I went about it and going about it and we're going to use Dicom and everything so there you go Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this episode. So there we go. We're going to continue on. And the next video, we'll actually be doing layout. Why? Because may, everybody has a different way they like to do layout. And we'll sit down and figure one out according to whatever, uh, we'll add a, out according to whatever fastener we decide to use for that one. So there you go. Thanks for watching. My public email address, eagledustoff37 at gmail.com. You guys, keep the comments coming. Thumbs up. Thank you spread the word about my channel. I greatly appreciate it. You guys, email me if you have any questions or hit me up on social media. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have my own Eagle Dust Off 37 page that I post everything to. And uh, so there you go. Anything else on my personal page uh, I like to discuss. And so there you go. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, Eagle Dust Off 37. Until next time, be safe. Take care of yourself and take care of family because remember at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Until next time, Get out in the shop and make some chips. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.